Are you ready to review five radio passages that are associated with the apex of the teeth? Hi there, I'm Frida. If you're new here, welcome. If you've been here, welcome back to the Dental Radiology. Condensing Ostitis. As the name suggests, condensing ostitis or sclerosing ostitis. It is means inflammation is a dense bone proliferation in response to inflammation. Therefore, it will only be found at the apex of a non-vital teeth. Check out my video on inflammatory jaw lesions to find out the process of this inflammation. Condensing ostitis appears as a irregular shaped radio opacity with a widened pedial space or preapical radiolucency between the root and the area of sclerosis. It needs root canal treatment of the non-vital teeth. The sclerotic bone may even remain after the treatment of the inflammation and is termed as osteosclerosis or bone scar. The key takeaway is that condensing ostitis is only associated with palpal inflammation, while the other apical radiopac lesions are associated with the vital teeth. That is a very important hint. Idiopathic osteosclerosis, also known as a dense bone island in osteosis or hypersemantosis, this finding is of um, unknown etiology. That's why we say it's idiopathic and typically occurs in the posterior of the mandible, but it can be found anywhere within the jaw. Idiopathic osteosclerosis present as a dense, homogeneous radiopacity with an amorphous shape. When it's associated with a root, the pedial space is normal and the tooth is vital. On a CBCT, it will blend into the adjacent cortex with no thinning or expansion. A dense bone island located preapical to a tooth root can cause external root resorption. Dense bone island does not require treatment. If multiple DBI are present, the patient's family history should be reviewed for the presence of, cl of colonic polyps for Gardner syndrome. Hypersemantosis. Hypersemantosis, as the name shows, is the buildup of excess cementum on the root surfaces. This deposition of cementum typically occurs within the apical third on the posterior mandibular teeth and may give the root a bulbous appearance. Though the appearance is unusual, the tooth is vital and the pedial space and the lamina dura will be normal and continues around the area of the hypersemantosis. So actually, it's a part of a normal teeth. You can say the root of the teeth is just getting bigger. The exact etiology is unknown. However, it's theorized to be as a response to unstable or changing occlusion conditions such as Paget disease and hyperpituitaris should be ruled out if the hypersemantosis is generalized. No treatment is necessary. However, the extraction of the teeth with hypersemantosis may be more difficult due to the bulbous shape of the roots. Cementoblastoma. A cementoblastoma is a benign odontogenic neoplasm of cementoblast. It is seen mostly involving the mandibular premolars or the first molars of young adults. Cementoblastoma appears as a well-defined radiopacity or mixed density lesion and that can have a radiolucent ring. So it can also have a spoke wheel pattern. Something important about the radiographic appearance is that the cementoblastoma is attached to the root 
it surrounds the root and the teeth is vital so remember the teeth is vital and the cementoblastoma is attached to the root the outline of the roots are usually obscured and external root resorption may be seen as well a clinical sign that can be very helpful and it's very important is that the patient has pain and swelling even though the teeth is vital so pain and swelling can also be present so because the cementoblastoma is a tumor it should be biopsied and sent for a pathological evaluation Cementoosseous dysplasia is a replacement of the normal trabecular bone with fibrous tissue and abnormal bone. It begins as a well-defined radiolucency associated with the apex of the teeth. And as the lesion starts to mature, the radiopacity starts to begin and appears around the tooth apex right in the center of the radiolucency. And the late stage lesions uh, presents as a dense radiopaque lesion with a radiolucent border that's surrounding it. You can see a radiolucent rim. When cementoosseous dysplasia involves the teeth, the lamina dura may be lost, and the pedial space would either be normal or it can be uh, as a widening appearance or it can be also lost. However, the involved teeth remains vital. So please don't confuse it with a preapical lesion, especially when it's in its early stage and has a radial set appearance and can mimic a preapical inflammation lesion. So no treatment is indicated for this lesion. However, yearly radiographic follow-up is recommended to assess the maturation of the lesion. Okay, this is a review and a few tips on how to differentiate between these uh, five apical radiopaque lesions. And uh, the most way that can help you for differentiating these lesions is look at the relationship between these lesions and the lamina dura, the pedial space of each root. The condensing ostitis is associated with pedial space widening, or you can see a preapical radiolucency. Uh, idiopathic osteosclerosis will remain with a normal pedial space. Hypersementosis is uh, contained with a uh, lamina dura and sp pedial space that appears to be normal. The cemental blastoma is attached directly to the root and often obscures the root and cemetoosseous dysplasia often cause the loss of lamina dura and the pedial is normal but we can see the maturation from going to uh, from going from the radiolucency towards the radiopacity okay that was all for today thank you for watching this video and subscribing my channel and helping me to grow this channel if you liked it please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends thank you for participating in spreading out the information to ones it would be helpful keep smiling and have an awesome day